Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are here, which may mean you're interested in streaming it. For that, you will of course need a capture card for your Switch. If you're interested in picking one of those out and you're not sure what to get but you don't have a big budget, I have some budget ones linked in a playlist in the description down below for you to learn more. Pretty much every capture card with HDMI works with Switch, so there's no Switch specific ideas, just getting a cheap capture card that meets your needs for streaming some gameplay since you can't just plug in like portable mode and capture from it. From there, you may want a sick layout. Let's talk about building and using some of these layouts, and I have free layouts available on Discord, linked below if you want some to get started. We're going to focus on building one that actually displays your party as you play, and you can update it as you go, which is pretty cool. I'm Eupos Vox, the stream professor. Let's dive in. The first step is for us to make a layout. Believe it or not, I used to be a PokeTuber on this channel for a time. Uh, a, a different time, but a time. <laughs> so I started with my old Pokemon Y Let's Play layout to remind myself of how it should feel, where, where I was going with it. Uh, the layout I'm building here is for Heart Gold specifically, which I will also distribute on the Discord as well. Uh, so I'm doing a side-by-side -side layout for both of the screens, the top and bottom screen, with room for a face cam as well. You can, of course, swap out the sizes for your face cam or what have you and kind of tweak it to your own if you're building your own, but that's what kind of this one is built for. I start by lining up where the squares for the two screens will go. I get the exact resolution of the DS screens for this game, which is a DS game, so I get the exact aspect ratio without having to stretch my gameplay feed later, because for me, that matters. Once we have our screens and face cam positioned, I slap on the logo and remember to finally save my project file, and we can start planning colors, additional visuals, and everything else, because right now we just have some squares. It's not much. I started out by trying a few gradients, but they weren't really connected to the game's look or aesthetic, and I ended up not liking that. So I uploaded the Heart Gold logo to a site called Coolers.co to grab my own swatch set of complementary colors that both matched the logo and complemented the logo as well that we could build off of. And then it was off to the races, borders and strokes for everything, a nice blend of the gold and yellow hues, making sure everything is lined up in a pleasing way. Those details matter for how professional it looks while still being fun and Pokemon. The raw gradient look is honestly kind of boring, so I was looking for some textures to overlay on certain parts to spice things up. I used to go with a ton of like grungy metal scratchy textures. It doesn't really fit here, uh, but of course the 90s random shapes is always a great look for me and really adds to the fun kind of childlike aesthetic of Pokemon, so that works out. Next I added a nameplate to the webcam view just to identify who I am, and then we have a big step. Badges. Heart Gold has two sets of badges, one for Johto, one for Kanto, so we need a total of 16 lined up. I end up trying to do them side by side, I don't think that really works, so we're going to stack them and just switch whenever we, you know, move to Kanto in the game. We'll come back to this later, just know that uh, we end up playing around with a lot of this to actually build the layout in OBS so we can dynamically change the badges. Now it was time to generally plan the area that our party team will be displayed. I'm using a placeholder screenshot grabbed from OBS just to get a good idea and make sure it will fit. I'm not doing a whole lot of specific graphics for them, I'm just making sure everything fits and works out. The layout is mostly done. Save it, we're gonna export some different files later, but now it's time to set up OBS and our script for our party. To set up your layout in OBS, make sure your resolution and frame rates and all of that are already how you intend to stream before you start or you're going to have some issues resizing things later. From Photoshop, I exported my layout in a multitude of layers that can be more cleanly kind of managed and blended with my other sources in OBS Studio, including the background as one layer, the bottom frame as a layer, the bottom bar and top bar as layers, and then the webcam frame as its own layer. That way we could stack everything and get everything kind of lined up. I added the badges as just the image I pulled off the internet of all eight and cropped in on each one to make a new layer for each individual badge, that way we can toggle it manually in OBS Studio based on when we acquire the badges, so we can just flip them on when we're good to go, and then I group them up based on region, so I have the Johto badges grouped up and the Kanto badges grouped up together so I can quickly move them around and manage as I need, uh, and then I can quickly and easily turn them on or off with the hotkey or stream deck button if I want to truly automate it, or I can just come in here and click it once we have actually gotten the badge. I also added a secondary copy of the badge image. I just added a color overlay of black over the badges to give them a silhouette look that the badges will actually paste on top of. That way we can have a representation of the badges we don't have alongside the badges we do have. From there, I added my webcam and made sure it was sized in the frame and all that. It's time to add our party sprites, which will dynamically change with us after a word from this video's sponsor. 
This video is brought to you by Riverside.fm, my new favorite podcast and video recording platform and what I will be using for future episodes of my Behind the Streams podcast. Riverside.fm is used by Gary Vee, Guy Raz, Spotify, Disney, and many more creators. It records audio and video locally on each participant's device and uploads these local files automatically to the Riverside dashboard. And oh man, the recordings look like they came straight out of camera, which is bonkers and a huge step up from what I was previously using. No more coordinating recording with your guests or anything like that as it's all really done for them. You can receive separate audio in uncompressed 48 kilohertz wave and video up to 4K tracks for all participants. And by all, I mean all, up to eight co-hosts or guests are allowed, which is wild. Riverside uses progressive uploading so that it uploads while the show goes on so you can download your files within seconds of hitting stop record. With the magic editor, you can save hours of editing work with a few clicks. Change your size, positioning, backgrounds, layouts, add a logo, and more. Plus, you can export the video ready to upload to video sites and download a transcription in seconds as well. Guests can even join from iPad and iPhone too. Did I forget to mention the cool part? Riverside Riverside.fm is also a streaming tool, meaning that while you're recording, you can also live stream to most major platforms, which is pretty neat. But streaming does not get in the way of recording. It is a recording first platform with quality as its focus, which I can really appreciate. Plans start from just $7.50 per month. Go to Riverside.fm slash EplesFox and use code EplesFox to get $15 off a plan today. For this project, we're using a tool called Pokemon HUD. It is an open source Python script for OBS Studio developed by one of my lovely subscribers. Shoutouts to Thomas. First, the annoying step is that we have to install the older Python 3.6.8 version. This is not the one that's in the Windows Store. And even if you have a newer version installed, we still have to also install this older version as OBS Studio requires this older version for Python scripts at the moment. Then follow the instructions to install the required Python libraries for this script. Go ahead and download the files as a zip from the GitHub and extract them somewhere you're familiar with and then open up that folder. Now open OBS Studio or close and reopen it if you already had it open for some reason. Go to Tools, Scripts, and then add the obspokemonhud.py as a script. Close this window and add six image sources to OBS. Name them one through six or party one through six because these will be your party sprites, but just leave them blank. Uh, the, the images themselves will be added by the script. Go back to the scripts menu and under slot X image source with X being the number of your party, select your image sources to assign them to each individual source. Now in the extracted folder, go ahead and copy team.example.json and rename it to something like team.json or you can name it by different playthroughs, different specific games, whatever, make it easier for you. Just make sure you know what it is. Now go back in the script menu, browse and select that file for the team.json file so it knows what team you're working with. Make sure run is checked at the top. Now add a new script and add the teameditor.py file. Again, under this menu, choose your, the same team.json file that you used in the previous script as well. Here, you now have the ability to enter the dex numbers for each of your Pokemon. Now, keep in mind, this is using the Pokemon Showdown deck, so it will be the full national decks, not necessarily the adjusted dex numbers for your specific game, uh, but you have access to every single Pokemon. So you can just enter the numbers and then check whether they're shiny or not. Click Save. Close this window for now. We'll reopen it when you're actually playing and resize your individual team sprites and position them on your layout how you want. And once they're done, group them up into your party as a group source, then then lock the transformation with the lock button. That way you don't mess them up later. Now, as you're playing your game, you can keep this team editor menu up and then just quickly change your party at any point and it will update with you, which is really nice. Go ahead and add your game capture sources and all of that and you're good to go. You've got a badass Pokemon layout ready to stream, collect all the badges, beat the Elite Four, do whatever it is you plan on doing, shiny hunting for 12 hours at a time. You do you. Along with this video, I'm releasing a ton of free resources for the would-be Poketubers out there. I've got high-res PSDs of some assets I made based on the original anime. I made this back in like 2018. Uh, we got title screens, webcam frames, an old uh, full layout from 2018 that I made that you may not want. Uh, along with full layouts for Heart Gold based on me that I made last year for this video. And then I have a big pack of layouts made by subscriber Gabriel Peppa. He made and contributed layouts for Pokemon Crystal, Emerald, Fire Red, Leaf Green, Soul Silver, Platinum, and Yellow for you all to download for free in our Discord. I'll have his Twitter and Fiverr linked below if you want to check him out or maybe have him whip you up something custom or whatever for your stream. Go check him out. Huge thanks to Peppa for contributing these for you all. I wanted some resources to be able to offer and I'm not a graphic designer, as you may have learned. 
You can download all these for free over on our Discord server at discord.gg slash eplusfox in the free downloads section. Pokemon Let's Playing is always something I have a, a pretty big soft spot for because it's something I literally used to do and I usually don't see decent video guides out there on how to actually set this kind of thing up. So I wanted to put this together and it's been a year since I originally planned on releasing it, but we're here. We got it. It's fine. We got a new game to talk about with it. Uh, so it's pretty cool. If there's enough interest, there is a different tool that I want to cover for using your party that will hook into emulators if you're em emulating games and automatically update them for you, which is cool. Let me know if you want to see that and let me know what you think about brilliant diamond shining shining pearl and all that or this video itself on discord and hit the like button remember be kind rewind